hey guys welcome back to another video as you guys can see by the title today's look is going to be a blue chunky glitter full cut crease look if you guys like to see how this look turns out please make sure to stay tuned to this video with this with that being said let's please get right into it all right so as you guys can see brows are already done per usual and now as you guys see i am basically blending out my p louise base i use the p louise base in the shade two and zero to put as a primer for my eyeshadow colors so i usually don't show this on camera but what i'm just doing is going in with a buffer blending brush and and just basically distributing their product across my eyelids and now i got the shade zero which is the pure white shade in the p louise basis i just put like a dot on my eyelids because i don't have really much space when it comes to my eyelids so i don't like to put too much because it'll be hard to blend out and it's white so you don't want it to be too much on your eyelids And you do want to make sure that you are blending and blending and blending it out because it is very easy for the P. Louise base to crack and it just appear too light on your eyelids. And now I'm just going to end with my sponge. And because I didn't like how my uh, brush was applying, I guess it's because it's a little too dirty. But it usually doesn't do that. But because I felt like it was just doing way too much, I just went in with my sponge and just blended it out with my sponge even though I barely ever do that. And then I just felt like it was streaky, so I just went back in with my brush and applied some more. And then off camera, I just went back in with that sponge and just blended it out again. And then you're going to let your P. Louise sit, base sit for about three minutes because you don't want to go straight in with eyeshadows because it'll allow the colors to mix together and it'll just look very, very tacky and muddy. Now I'm going to be using my Back to Brazil palette. I love this palette. Y'all got, you guys already know I love this palette for the colors that it has in the palette. I'm going to be starting off with the black. And I'm going to be starting off with the black because I want my cut crease, like the creases, crease colors to be pretty smoky. So I'm going to be doing a reverse method for this specific look just because I feel like the reverse method allows your colors to be a lot more bold and pigmented. So what I'm doing is I'm going in with a small blending brush. Well, a small buffer blending brush. And then I'm just going to use that brush to pack that color on. I'm not going to blend it out yet. I'm going to just pack that black into my crease and then I'm going to do the same for the other eye. I personally love the uh, Back to Brazil palettes black. I feel like it's like the most pigmented and the blackest black that I do have in my kit right now. So that's why I decided to go with the Back to Brazil color black. And so now as you guys can see, the black is all on my crease and it looks very, very bold. Now I'm going to be going in with my BH Cosmetics and It's My Barbary Collab palette. I love the neutrals in this palette and I just feel like it'll be the best palette to use when it comes to blending out this black. So I'm going to go in with this ashy brown. It's like an ashy brown in person and I feel like it'll be the best color to transition from the black and still allow it to look very, very smoky. So I'm going to be using a fairly sparse blending brush to blend out this uh, black and to go into with the other colors. So as you guys can see, I'm not swiping this second shade onto the black shade. I'm more so just patting on two. And when you guys pat it into the first shade that you guys will be able to see automatically that it's already blending. So this is something I've been doing lately. At first I used to do the swiping effect, but now I just, you know, I've been doing the effect where you just like pat it on top of the other color. And it just allows it to be a lot more quicker and easier to blend out your colors.
So now the two colors are pretty much blended out. I still have to do a lot more blend out, but this is pretty much blended out. And now I'm just going to go back in with that black just because I usually feel like I'm losing the first shade. But I go on top of it with the second shade. So I'm just going back in with that black using the exact same brush that I used to apply the black the first time. And now, so as you guys can see, the eyeshadows all together looks a lot more bold. And that's how I like it. Now, I'm just going to go back in with that same palette. And I'm going to be using this warm, it's like a reddish toned orange. And I thought that I needed some type of warm to this look just because I didn't want it to be smoky all around. I just feel like the this shade would definitely brighten it up a little bit. So, I'm going to be going in with that. And I'm going to be using a very large eyeshadow brush just because a very large eyeshadow brush would be the best brush to use for when you are applying your last shade. So, as you guys can see, I'm just going around that second shade. I'm going to go around that shade with this um, warm shade just so that it can be a lot easier for me to blend it out. And now, so by me applying that last shade, it allowed the color, the overall look to look a lot more brighter and just a lot more put together. And now, so this has to be my favorite part. I love cutting my creases, y'all. I decided to do a full cut crease. At first, I was a little confused on which what kind of look I wanted to do but I feel like I haven't did a full cut crease in a minute so I decided to go in with a full cut crease I'm not really going to go into deep detail about how I cut my creases let me let me know if you guys would like to see how I cut my creases because I feel like I do a pretty good job at them and the products I use that I that are extremely inexpensive So look at it, that's just one crease cut already. And that's just period, y'all. I do a very good job of cutting my creases, for real, for real. And I forgot to mention this, but I did use the P. Louise base in the shade zero. The P. Louise bases are $15. I feel like they're pretty inexpensive, you know, a little bit more affordable than you would think they are. So I use the P. Louise base in the shade zero to cut my crease. And then that's just how it looks. That, looks, that is perfect, y'all. Y'all can't tell me that ain't perfect. Okay, so now I'm going to go back in with that Back to Brazil palette. And I wanted to use that blue because I need some type of base to put down before I add my glitters. It's very important to add a base. This is something I used to not do. And I definitely uh, see a difference in it. You know, an importance in why you why you should do this. But basically, you want to make sure that you are going in with that base. Typically, whatever color that your glitters are, I would suggest that you use that color for your base so i'm using blue glitters today so i wanted to do some type of blue base so i am going to be doing a gradient from light blue to dark blue just because i wanted my crease to look a lot more dimensional then i'm going to go back in with the back to brazil palette and i'm going to be using that shade that's under the shade that i just got done using for the outer portion of my crease like i said because i wanted some type of dimension when it comes to my crease color and when it comes to the base that i'm going to be using for my glitters and I'm just doing the exact same thing to the other side. And I forgot to mention this. I'm pretty sure you guys can see by the clip. But I am using a flat shade brush to do this. I feel like those are the best brushes to use when you're trying to apply um, lid colors. And then as you guys can see, it looks so much better than it would if I would have just did one color blue. Then I'm going to be going in with this just like a random brush. And I'm just going to be basically blending the two colors together because it looks a lot divided. It looks like you're able to see the blue then the dark blue. So I'm just going to be using that brush to kind of blend it out and so that it won't look so divided. And then so I'm gonna go be, go back in with my Back to Brazil pot, and I'm gonna be mixing a very dark blue, and I'm gonna be mixing a black together. You guys can see I'm pointing at the two shades, and I'm gonna be using like a angled blending brush to just kind of pack those two colors at the end, like the outer view of my eye, just because I feel like I wanted to make it a lot more deep. I wanted to look a lot more dimensional. You know, you just want your eyeshadows to look very dimensional. You don't want a very flat eyeshadow look. So as you guys can see, it already it already looks for one, it looks very good, and it's a lot different from the other side. As you guys can see that's how it looks before and that's how it looks after so i'm just doing that for both sides so that it can look identical 
and here goes the star part of it all okay so first and foremost you want to make sure that you do have a glitter glue your glitters will not be able to stick into your eyes if you do not have a glitter glue i got this glitter glue from the beauty spot store for 2 dollars make sure to link it down in the description box below so when you are applying your glitter glue you want to make sure that you first apply it onto the lid and then what i like to do is once i get done applying the glitter glue onto my lid i like to go in with my finger and i just smear it out with my finger just so i can create that cut crease shape you don't want to just put it on there because it'll allow your cut crease to look very very sloppy and not sharp when you do a cut crease you want your cut crease to look very very sharp and very very defined and detailed I honestly do pretty much recommend this glitter glue. I've been using this glitter glue since I started doing glitters like around last year. And it has been doing a very good job for only $2.99. Definitely recommend it. And another thing that I like about this glitter glue is that it is shimmery. So it creates the illusion of already having glitters. And so the glitters that I'm going to be using today are from Amazon. I did a video reviewing these glitters. If you guys haven't checked that out, please go make sure to check that out. It was when I was doing the uh, purple cut crease look. And I love these glitters. I literally got 12 of them for $7.99 off of Amazon. I'll make sure to leave it down in the description box below. I'm making sure to use a flat shade brush. But the thing about this flat shade brush is that it's angled. So it fits perfectly for when you are uh, putting things on your crease so that you won't get it into your actual like crease colors. You guys see that it fits perfectly for when I'm trying to get in my inner corner. And that's why I decided to use a angled flat shade brush to do this specific procedure. <laughs> Another thing that I decided to do, I did not want to go all the way down to my outer V when it comes to my um, glitters. I wanted to just keep them more so in the inner corner all the way to the middle. Then I'm going to be going back in with that brush that I used earlier for when I mixed in the, the dark blue and the black. Because I wanted it to look a lot more deepened. Y'all know I love a smoky eye. So I wanted to make sure that it looked a lot more deepened. Even though it didn't really need it. But I just feel like why not add some more color into my outer V honestly. And that's on period. See, look, I look so good, y'all. I already come together. And so for this video, I decided to do like the new technique that I've been doing lately. It's not a new technique, but it's something new that I've been doing. I did a very detailed tutorial on how to do this technique on, on my video on my on channel already. I already have that on my channel. So you guys want to make sure to go look that up. Please make sure to go look that up when I did my breast cancer awareness look. So basically, this is a technique where you do everything all at one time. So it's a lot quicker and it's a lot easier for you to do your makeup. Definitely a good tool and a good technique to do when you are trying to figure out exactly like where the foundation is supposed to go, where the concealer is supposed to go. Definitely good for beginners like when you're just starting to do makeup. So I'm just going to apply my concealer everywhere that my concealer belongs. And I'm going to be putting my foundation everywhere my foundation belongs. And then I'm going to be putting my contour everywhere my contour belongs. I used the LA Girl Pro Concealer in the shade Fawn. I used the Maybelline Fit Me Super Stay Powder, I mean Super Stay Foundation in the shade 365 Warm Coconut. So now I'm just putting my contour everywhere that my contour belongs. And then for my contour, I use the Black Opal Foundation Stick in the shade Suede Mocha. And I love this shade for me, y'all. I used to use the darkest shade that I had. And I stopped using it because it was way too dark. But this shade is the perfect shade for me. I love the undertone. And I just love it so much. Definitely recommend it. It was like $10. I got it from Walmart. And it's like $9 or $10. So definitely very expensive in drugstore approval. So now I'm just going to go back in with my sponge and I just use a sponge to blend out everything. I'm not, like I said, told you guys, I'm not going to do an in-depth tutorial on how to do this. But you do want to make sure that you start off with blending out your foundation first. Wherever you steer foundation, you want to make sure that you blend out those parts first. Very, 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 very much blend it out before you go in and blend out your concealer and blend out your contour. And now I'm just blending out everywhere where I see my concealer. And I do use the same sponge for when I'm blending out my foundation and concealer. 
I do that because I feel like it allows the two products to really come together and not allow it to look so divided. And I'm just going in with my other brush that I use to blend out my contour. And I'm just going to blend out my contour in all the areas that I see contour. I actually do love this technique a lot. I don't know. For some reason, I feel like I look a lot more full coverage and a lot more like put together, honestly, when I do this technique. So I probably will start doing a lot more. I don't really do it a lot. But I definitely feel like I probably would do a lot more. And then also, it doesn't take that long to do. I feel like it takes probably like 30 minutes and hours to do your complexion part when you do this technique. And so whenever I feel like I want to do a like an actual full beat, I usually go back in with the P. Louise base in the shade 2, the same shade that I used to for my base for my eyeshadows. I use that and I put a little bit of it right under my eyes to give it more of a bright look because, you know, sometimes I like a neutral glam. Sometimes I like a full beat look. In this case, I really wanted a full beat look, so it allowed my under eye to look a lot more bright. I definitely don't use too much because I don't want it to look too bright. Like it is a very light shade. So if you use too much of it, then you would just look very, very light and you don't want that. And so for setting my face, I use the Maybelline Fit Me Loose Powder in the shade 35 Deep to set all my highlighted areas, all the areas that I apply concealer. And so for my contour areas, I use the back to, the BH Cosmetics and it's my Rarity Collab palette. It has like a try, it's like a try fold. So at the bottom, it has like a contour uh, palette where you have like the contour shades and highlighting shades. So I use that contour shade. It's, I use two of the contour shades in that palette to uh, powder my contour areas. Thank you. 
And then for my highlight, y'all, look at this highlight. This highlight is freaking popping. I use the BH Cosmetics 6 Pan Highlighting uh, Palette. I think it's in the uh, Royal Quartz. If I'm not mistaken, it's in the Royal Quartz Collection. I'm not really sure, but I make sure to leave it in the description box below. But this highlight is freaking popping. And I did not even spray my brush in order to get it to be extremely pigment. It was, like, very pigment on, it own, on its own. So I definitely had to go in with, like, a big, like, fan brush to kind of, like, tone it down. Because it was a little too much for me. So I just apply the highlight wherever I want to highlight. I usually put it in the middle of my forehead. I put it on my cupid's bow. I put it like on the tip of my nose. I put it in the bridge of my nose. Of course, I put it on my cheeks. And I also put a dot up on my chin just because I feel like this look needs a lot of highlight, baby. And I also decided to put some in my brow bone as well. And that made the look look so much better than it was before. And so for this part, I got from Taylor Mae Jane in one of her videos from yesterday that I watched. So basically what I am doing, and I'm going in with that P. Louise Bay in the shade Zero, which is the pure white. And I'm just going to get like a very detailed um, eyeshadow brush. And I'm going to be putting in that in my waterline. And what this does, it does three things. It allows your lash, lower lash line colors to actually pop. And it also allows it to not be able to have like a lot of fallout. Because when we put our lower lash line colors on, it looks a lot like when you're putting it on it like the fallout like comes all in your under eye and it looks very very bad and i also it allows your eyes to look a lot more bigger than what they are especially with certain looks a lot of people like to do with like neutral glams so that it can really get the illusion that your eyes are a lot wider than what they are so i learned this tip from her yesterday and i definitely decided to do it you don't have to have the p louise base you can use literally like the ella girl pro concealer shade in the shade zero or you can use you can use anything that you want that's like pure white Some people even like to use the NYX Jumbo Lip Line that you literally find in like Walmart or like a beauty supply store. And so before you go in with your lower lash line color, you want to make sure that that P. Louise base is like pretty tacky. Just like you want to put it on your eyeshadow, like on your lid, you want to make sure that it is very tacky before you go in with any product. Because it can allow it to look a lot muddy and you do not want that. So I'm just like putting some mascara on my lashes just to kind of pass time. Then I'm going to be going back in with that Back to Bridge Zip Pie. I'm going to be using the two blues that I use for my eyeshadows, for like my actual eyes. I'm going to be using those two blues. I'm going to be putting both of those in my lower lash line just to give it a lot more color because it just looks so much better when you put colors on your lower lash line. So, of course, going to be doing it for both eyes. So, what I did, I decided to put the lighter blue on the outer V. And then I decided to put the darker blue in the inner corner. So, just, I don't know. I just wanted to do something different. Something I usually don't do. And then I'm just going to be putting some mascara under my eyes just because I feel like, I don't know, I just wanted to do some stuff that I just usually don't do. So just putting mascara on my eyes definitely gave the illusion of a more smokier look. Y'all can I freaking tell me that do not look good, y'all. I'm so freaking proud of myself, period. Now I'm going to be going in with a NYX lip liner. I forget the exact shade, but I made sure to leave it down in the description box below. I wanted to do a new lip. That's like my go-to lip for any look. So I just made sure to go in with a brown lip liner first just because I didn't want to just slap on a new lip. I'm just too dark for that. So I'm just outlining my lips per usual. And then so for this new lipstick, I forgot the exact brand and exact shade that I got, but... I'll make sure to leave it down in the description box below. But it's literally like my favorite nude 
um shade like my favorite nude lipstick to use and then i'm just patting it make sure that it looks pretty blended the way i like it i feel like i need a little bit more lip liner because i feel like i lost that lip liner when i added the um nude lipstick so i'm just going back in just because i don't want it to look too light and then i just got your literal typical like clear lipstick clear lip liner that you see from the beauty supply store period and then so that's the end of this look i hope you guys enjoyed it i absolutely love how this look came out and these are just some pictures and just the videos of how it looks from the low light i feel like this look definitely deserved a low light if you guys like how this look turned out please make sure to leave a like on this video comment video suggestions and subscribe to my channel